The weeks went on slowly for the engines on the Redwick and Children Hills as summer gradually faded to autumn. Work had continued as usual, with Mr. Stard still absent from the railway, and Mr. Hoff leading the charge instead, proving to be quite the capable young lad. With his excellent work ethic and steadfast business mind, the railway ran like clockwork, with the odd incident here and there due to a certain grange. However, there was still the issue of the disappearance of Clint's parts. Try as they might, the engines had no luck in locating the missing van. Not even Clark and Riley's escapade had yielded any results, though they wouldn't say much on the matter when inquired about their little adventure. Meanwhile, not too far from the railway, Mr. Stard was surveying the scene of a scrapyard in front of him. He had been very busy the past month, traveling all over the country to conduct business and try and strike some deals with various companies regarding the different wares that the Eastwood branch had on offer. This escapade had proven to be extremely successful, with many of the larger towns and corporations showing their interest, and Mr. Stard promising swift and safe delivery in his pristine vans and wagons. The problem was, he had no wagons, so he had to locate some before he could return to the railway. He walked up to the foreman of the yard and turned his charisma on. Good day, sir. I was wondering if I could inquire about buying some of your best wagons? Hmm? Oh, sure. Though our best isn't really great. This is a scrapyard, after all. I see. Well, I didn't come all this way for nothing. Let's have a look at them, then. The foreman shrugged and motioned for Mr. Stark to follow him deeper into the scrapyard. Soon they arrived at a pair of sidings in the back of the scrapyard filled with wagons. However, most of the wagons in the siding looked either to be rotted and rusted, while others were mineral wagons, which he already had more than enough of. He walked through the different rakes of wagons, noting a few he could work with. Others were completely beyond saving. He was now at the end of a long rake of wagons that were in relatively good shape. When he looked up at the last wagon, he saw it was a standard van, still used on the main line to this day, and it looked as though it had just been put there. So, what's the story with this one? Storage van for your tools? No, that one came here a few days ago. Bit strange if you ask me. Seems to be in perfect working condition if you ask me. So I've got no clue why they wanted it scrapped. But what do I know? I just scrapped their useless shite. I see. So it's for sale then? If you want it and have the money for it, it's yours. We've no need for it. Tell you what, since you're taking so much off our hands, I'll give you a discount on this lot. British Railways paid up front for these to be smashed up, so if anything, you're saving us the work. That is indeed very kind of you, sir. Shall we head to your office to conduct the paperwork, then? As you wish. Right this way, sir. As the two men headed back towards the yard man's office, Mrs. Stard suddenly stopped dead in his tracks. The foreman noticed and frowned. Is something the matter, sir? This engine. I've never seen its design before. Do you know what it is? Ain't got a clue, mate. Only one way to find out. Oi, you there. Are you talking to me, funny boys? Glad to see I'm resting here. This gentleman asked a question. What design are you? I'm an ex-Caledonian Railway 498 class, or Beetle Crushers as we're commonly referred to. We're built for dark shunning and... That'll do. Anyways, shall we- I wasn't done. If you ever do that again, I'll slap you that hard your eyes will be peeking out your asshole. Do I make myself clear? The foreman looked as if he was about to explode with anger, but Mr. Stard smirked. Oh, I like you. How would you like to come and work on my railway? I'd rather rot here for another 50 years. Excellent. How much for this one, then? Just take him before I cut him up myself. Oh, brilliant. I'll have my engine collect them in the wagons I'm buying, then. Now, come on, I'm sure you're a busy man. Let's get this paperwork sorted. And so, the two men continued towards the office, Mr. Stard feeling very happy with the assets he'd acquired today. The next day, Ramsey, Riley, and Darius were resting between jobs in the sheds at Redwick. As usual, the three friends were talking utter bollocks to each other, enjoying a slight cool autumn breeze. And then somehow we managed to leave the tanker filled with raw sewage on the main line. I tell you, the engine pulling the express that day was not happy. I can imagine the passengers and crews weren't either. Oh, tell me about it. Mr. Stard's father had to pay for all the damages and the cleaner's bill. 
Fucking hell! What kind of engine would do something so rude yet absolutely hilarious? You're looking at him, mate. Huh. What the fuck? Where did... Wait, Seb? Sup, fuckers? I'm back. We're doomed. Seb, me old mate. Welcome back. Wait, what are you doing here? I thought you were with Axel and Levi over at Banbury. Well, I heard rumours that Mr. Stard had brought some new land. Figured I'd come and fuck it up for him before he profits too much. Seb, I swear to all that's holy, if you so much as put a piece of Mr. Dexby's ballast out of line, I will personally cut you up inch by inch, leaving your boiler to last. Am I clear? Didn't ask, I still do it. Go fuck yourself. Right. Anyways, hello, engines. It has certainly been a while. Hello, sir. How was the trip up north? How are the local pubs up there, more like? Very funny, Riley. Believe it or not, I actually conducted real business up there for the Eastward Branch's different local businesses to see if any big corporations or towns would be interested in some of the things they have to offer. Turns out the only people really interested are up in Scotland. Hence why I ended up in Glasgow. However, I knew I'd needed some rolling stock and someone to haul them. Hence why Seb is here. Whoa, 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 whoa. hold up. You bought Seb? Are you out of your mind? Oh heavens no, you think I'm made of money? I'm simply leasing him from British Railways until I can gather the funds to buy locomotive built for freight to handle that job, seeing as you are an express passenger locomotive, Seb. Though, in the future I may buy him, depending on how helpful he is against British Railways. Ah, so you're in London, are you, Seb? Welcome aboard. I'm Darius, by the way. I'm pretty new around here. The pleasure is all mine. Wait, so you actually told him then? Pardon, sir, but are you insane? He is literally the embodiment of insanity on rails. Oh, come on, I'm not that bad. Now, are those gas tankers and gunpowder vans still down at the estate? I hear King Richard's Express is coming by soon. Seb, we talked about this. No killing. Yet. Oh, wow, we are fucked. Okay, anyways, I should go see Mr. Hoff about taking charge again. Seb, head down to Eastwood Junction. I'm pretty sure they can find something for you to do. Right away, sir. And as for the rest of you, get your lazy asses back to work. We have a railway to run here, not a book club. We missed you too, sir. Later that day, Virgil had been brought down to Manifel by Mr. Stard to help with some movements at the works while he had a chat with the workers. Virgil had been told to grab a few of the wagons Mr. Stard had recently bought from the disused sidings near the mainline sheds, so the workers could get started on them while the search for Clint's parts continued. He pulled into the yard, stopping just short of a long rake of wagons. This is the lot. I'd best get chanting right away so the works can get... Wait, what's this? Virgil looked to the left of the wagons. Standing on the next line was the exact same van as the one that was at the front of the rake. He frowned and looked around, trying to figure out where it came from. What's this doing here, then? I thought Mrs. Todd said they'd all be in one rake. He then looked over to the roundhouse, where Clark was sitting yelling at the other engines for being lazy, even though he himself had bunked off work. Oh, so that's why I had to make my way down here. Lazy prick. He sighed and began to shunt the wagons, hoping to be done quickly so he could get back to his branch line. While Virgil had scuttled off to collect some of the wagons, Mr. Stard had entered the works to check up on Clint's progress. He had been informed by Mr. Hoff about the disappearance of the parts he had ordered for him, leaving him quite worried. He had hoped to have Clint ready for the grand reopening of the branch line, seeing as he was one of the original engines that used to run it. He was having a chat with one of the workmen, trying to find a solution for the situation. So, he's still under them? I'm afraid so. Without his new parts, he could be in a lot of pain if he woke him up. Not very humane if you ask me. No, definitely not. But are they sure they've searched all over the railway? No chance they missed anything? As far as I know, they've searched everywhere except for the main line. It makes no sense though. How can a van just up and vanish like that? Through the night? Only thing I can think of is that it got stolen in the night. But that would require an engine to take it away. And I find that very unlikely. 
He sighed and scratched his chin, thinking deeply. You know, at this point it might as well be worth it to invest in machinery needed to make those parts ourselves. At that point we could just turn this maintenance shed into a proper works. And who's gonna pay for that? Certainly not British Railways, I imagine. I'd imagine the same, and I certainly don't have the funds to do so either. Not yet, anyways. But hey, maybe one day, eh? Just then, Virgil came into the works with a short rake of some of the wagons Mr. Starter told him to fetch. All the wagons were in need of a once-over, but Mr. Starter asked him to bring in the ones that needed the least amount of work on them so they could be outshopped as fast as possible. Here you go, sir. These should be the best of the lot. Brilliant. Thank you, Virgil. That will be all. Wait, Virgil? Yes, sir. Is something the matter? Where did you get the second standard van from? I swear I only bought one of those. Um, I don't know, sir. One was sat on its own next to this rake. I just figured it had been put there so it wouldn't block the points. Hang on a minute. No, it can't be. Can't be what? What's the matter? The workman said nothing. Running to the office before coming up with some transport documentation, scanning through them before suddenly exclaiming loudly, Holy shit! This is the one! Right, stop being so damn cryptic and tell me what's up before I sack you and ensure you end up at the shelter. Speak. Now. S sir this is this is the van. This is the one we've been looking for. Virgil, you're a lifesaver! You're joking. It, it couldn't be. They've searched that siding before and found nothing. How? Are you sure this is the one? Positive, sir. Let me go grab the keys for the lock. Fuck that, grab the bolt cutters! The two men scrambled to get the doors of the van open, finally breaking the lock clean off. They both peered inside and almost cheered in joy. Inside the van was Clint's parts. Finally, it looked as if progress on Clint would pick up again. The last survivor of the Abadir class would return to service after being asleep for way longer than intended. I can't believe it! Virgil! You're a legend for finding it! This is absolutely brilliant! I have to go tell the volunteers about it! But, sir, that wasn't the... But Mr. Starr didn't listen. He bolted into Virgil's cab, pushing his driver aside as he put him into reverse and opened his reg. No time to race, Virgil! Off we go! But, sir... <sighs> okay, later then. Virgil moved up the line, but he wasn't smiling or as happy as Mr. Starr was. What Mr. Starr didn't know is that the van with the parts wasn't the one he'd found on his own. It was the one at the front of the rake of wagons, the one Mr. Starr had bought. Virgil kept pondering on how this was possible, and Mr. Starr relayed the news to the volunteers present, giving them a much-needed boost in morale. Virgil saw how happy they all got. He decided it would be best to keep it to himself, for now at least. He didn't want to break their spirits, and besides, it could just be a massive coincidence. He simmered happily as Mr. Starr went to discuss the future plans for the final touches on the line, certain that the grand reopening was right around the corner. So then, were my sources correct? Yes sir, Mrs. Sard has indeed bought the van we sent to the scrapyard. Seems those brainless gits lied when they said they'd scrap it first thing next day. Yes, that is quite disappointing. So, what do you do with the van? Is the situation under control? I am afraid not sir. I was going to swap the van with another. However, that damn Virgil was sent to collect some of them for the works before I got a chance to. Including the two vans. I managed to hide myself in the sheds, though. I don't think he saw me. I see. That is disappointing indeed. I, I'm sorry, sir. P please, forgive my failure. You are forgiven. This time. Luckily for you, I have a plan B. And what would that be? All in due time, my old friend. For now, I suggest that you get back to your estate before people stop missing you. No need to worry. Mr. Starden is worthless engines will not succeed in their endeavors to outperform us. He has not won yet. As you say, sir, you know where to find me if you need me.
And there's someone walking past outside my house. <laughs> Ooh! Fucking cunt.